except for Northrop and ourselves, all the other major companies reported sizable profits, and the market value of their stocks reflect their good financial performance. You might wonder, where are we earning or losing money? This chart compares the earnings or losses of each segment to the second quarter of last year. There are a few bright spots. Combat aircraft and information systems showed substantial improvement compared with a year ago. Financial services also did very well. The only reason their earnings were lower than last year is that they had a large gain in the second quarter of 1988. Earnings for missiles, space, and electronic systems were down substantially because of events which I hope were of a one-time nature. But far and away, the biggest disappointment for the quarter was a $158 million loss in transport aircraft. For years at DAC, we've tried Band-Aids as a way of patching outmoded systems and processes that were breaking down under the weight of rapid and sustained expansion. Since February, when we launched the massive restructuring of their organizations, systems, and the very way work is performed, there has been substantial disruption. But I consider it an inevitable part of the cure, not the problem. This time, we are fixing the root causes of DAC's problems not just making do with the old ways. But don't expect immediate bottom line results at DAC. It's a large organization, and the whole team will have to pull together powerfully before we see progress. With everyone pitching in, like Rick Boltz and his team, we'll realize the potential of DAC's tremendous backlog and orders. Recently, I announced plans to reduce our information systems business. I'm disappointed because it means abandoning our goal to become a leading supplier of hardware, software, and networks. Even though MDISC has had a greatly improved first half this year, posting a small profit for the first time, we still haven't been able to create the integrated product and service offerings to powerfully differentiate ourselves from our competitors. However, we are staying in the systems integration business, offering computer-aided design, manufacturing, and logistics. This unit will become an increasingly important supplier to our own aerospace companies and other companies here and abroad. We'll also retain an interest in the highly successful international unit, which distributes our systems integration products outside of North America. Unfortunately, this report of significant events affecting our corporation would not be complete without addressing the recent DC-10 accidents. We're all saddened by the tragic loss of life. Your friends and families have probably questioned you about the accidents, and you need to know the facts. Jean Duval of Employee Communications discussed these events with Douglas Aircraft Company's Dale Warren, an engineering executive and technical spokesman for the DC-10. Dale, what is the current status of the investigation on the DC-10? Well, let me first talk about Tripoli, Gene. Uh, Tripoli is an easy story. It's a short story. Uh, basically, we have had extreme difficulty in access to Libya. Um, as a matter of fact, our investigators did not actually get inside of Libya. We do have other sources for information. Uh, so they're therefore secondhand. But the information we have clearly indicates that there is no problem with the airplane and that there is no connection between the Libya accident and any other accident of a D involving a DC-10, specifically no connection with Sioux City. Well, Dale, can you tell us something about Sioux City? Uh, yes. Uh, Sioux City, as you know, is being investigated by the NTSB. They have the official U.S. authority to investigate and determine the cause of the accident. Uh, their investigation is uh, uh, stymied a bit at this time because some major engine parts are missing. It was uh, a massive engine failure. Even though we can't find the parts, we know it was something special. Uh, there were over 700 pounds of parts that departed from the front part of that engine. Uh, to appreciate the significance of that, stopping those parts uh, amounts to the equivalent of trying to stop a 3,000-pound car that's traveling at 200 miles an hour. Tremendous amount of energy, more massive than any other failure we've ever seen. What does the FAA have to say about this? Uh, well, the FAA issued a press release recently asking for an industry government task force to address the issues associated with survivability. They recognize this as a massive engine failure, something that's never been seen before. 
they relate it to other major failures, and they see the overall problem as a matter of survivability. And they are asking for this industry task force to work on the information that's available from the Sioux City accident and other accidents and make recommendations to improve the survivability and safety level of current and future designs. We have already started our work uh, along those lines, and we've, in fact, incorporated some fundamental ideas of TQMS. We have had uh, key operators in our plant uh, working with us to analyze the findings and to develop recommendations for future course of action for the FAA. Can you share with us the overall record for the DC-10? The DC-10 overall record is outstanding. It is a fine airplane. It has an outstanding record of performance and reliability and on-time departures. In addition to that, in the area of safety, just prior to the Sioux City accident, the air fleet of DC-10s had accumulated 8 million flying hours without a fatal accident. To better appreciate the number 8 million, recognize that that's the equivalent of 900 years of continuous flight with one airplane. Thank you very much, Dale. Thank you. Thank you, Dale Warren and Jean Duval, for that report. Returning to the subject of our performance, it's obvious that our work is cut out for us inside every unit of our corporation. But there are factors outside of McDonnell Douglas that impact our success. For one, the Defense Department is under increasing pressure to reduce its budget more and more. It's recommending that the production of the F-15 Eagle be ended in fiscal year 1991, after the manufacture of only 200 of the 329 E models the Air Force originally planned. While our role in the budget debate is limited, there is an area over which we have a great deal of influence, the quality of the product we deliver to the Air Force. And no one is in a better position to discuss the importance of product quality to our customer and to our future than Bob Barnhart. Bob is a senior engineer and field service representative supporting the introduction of the F-15E at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina. The F-15E is the next generation of the F-15 fighter. It has evolved from an air-to-air -air fighting machine to an air-to-ground now. Seymour Johnson will be the first operational wing for the F-15E. We have a training squadron out at Luke, but this will be the first operational unit to go to war if something should happen. We, the McDonnell Aircraft Field Service Engineers, are here to help the customers support the system in its new stages. Primarily, we're here as training to help the customer over the rough spots on the initial development of the system. We need to be an instructor. We need to be a technician. Sometimes we just need to be able to console the customer when something is not going right. It's important for the field service engineer to be in touch with operations as well as maintenance, especially at the debrief after a mission. Many times the debriefer is not familiar with all the systems on the aircraft. He can't be. So when the pilot comes in and indicates, I pushed this button or I threw that switch and this did or did not happen, there may be three or four other questions you can ask which will isolate the situation. Or even possibly in some occasions like we have, indicate that the system was working the way it should for what was happening. So you count on your skills, your knowledge, your ability to interpret inputs. I can't explain the satisfaction when you fix a problem on an aircraft. Very satisfying to be able to say, I helped them. Customer satisfaction isn't just the mechanic on the flight line. It involves the personnel in St. Louis putting the systems together. You can't inspect quality into the system. It has to be there from the start. We had an aircraft here that had an intermittent problem. We couldn't define it at the flight line level. Finally, we took the aircraft down, just took it out of the flying schedule, depaneled it, and we found something as simple as a pin not locked into place in a cannon plug. You're probably talking in excess of 100 man hours 